to the Nerd Effect News Show. Week ending July 13th, 2014. I'm one of your anchors, Dustin Vancouver. Really excited to be here. Joined by my buddies. Michael Morgan. Mason Ireland. Nick A. Brandle. Huzzah! Yay. Hooray! Huzzah! Can we start doing huzzahs instead? I, I'm down for huzzahs. Huzzah! huzzah. Wait, 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 let's try it again. Nicky Brindle! Huzzah! huzzah! Eh. Yeah, no, yay's uh, better. The yay's, all, three yay's with one huzzah was pretty good, but the four huzzahs are just a bit much. Way too much enthusiasm. Yeah, it's a little bit night. too much. Yeah. But I am excited, you know why? Because we're big. Yes. Last yes, week, uh... Good. Dustin was lame. D- lame? <laughs> Excuse me. I'm Dustin. I Let me update toddler. if you didn't know. <laughs> But I had a, uh, I had a uh, car troubles, and to the extent of like, oh shit, <laughs> to the extent of he has a new car now. Yes, um, so my 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 old old Oldsmobile is uh your old olds. Yep, yeah, is a, a for, a fortunately uh, uh taking its last uh breath? sip of petrol. Yes, <laughs> which which we destroyed that car like internally. Getting everything out of it emotionally. <laughs> it was it was emotional. I, no, I, I mean, I you destroyed it. it emotionally. That car held a lot to me. It was my grandpa's before mine, and yeah, the, that car has been you know basically in my family for roughly fifteen years or so. I'd say so. It's been around a while. Uh, um, uh, may may it rest in peace. Yes, is. <laughs> Because that's probably what's going to happen to it, but uh, yeah, we had, I took all my speakers out of it, and my stereo, and my monitors, and uh, amp subs, and amp, and and then my brother-in-law came over, and we fucking siphoned the full tank of gas I just put in it before it broke. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> and uh, so yeah, that was a fun time. It's not been a good month for nerd effect vehicles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, everything's good now. I now am driving a 2004 Ford Taurus, which has air conditioning like a motherfucker. And, Yay for uh, Ford air conditioning! Yeah, yeah. And uh, There's a little of that myself. <laughs> I've never personally owned a vehicle with air conditioning in it before, so this is a bit of a. N- I guess you could count my wife's. I mean, I do drive it on occasion, but uh, uh, it was never. You know, I don't. I don't feel like I have ownership of it, you know. It's, just, it's not your It's car. hers. Yeah. She brought it into the relationship. Well, then it's her car, not your car. You yeah. Mean, you know. Right. But uh, we're pretty excited. It's a good car. Lots, A lot roomier. I actually thought I was picking these two up on the way over here, so I ended up taking my kid seat out of the out of the car. But Sorry. then I forgot Mike had a truck. Mike's got a truck now. It doesn't oh. have your fancy air conditioning shit, but it's pretty sweet. It works. <laughs> Get me point A from point B, which is what I really need right now. Hey, and if you ever decide to sell it, I'll buy it from you. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, you already have a buyer. Yeah. Bam. Nikki's got the truck bugged now. <laughs> the truck bug? Oh, yeah. I don't want to buy a car car ever again. <laughs> <laughs> Trucks are great. I like my car. Oh, cars are fine. Have you ever driven owned a truck? I test drove a Durango while I was, while right. I was at it. It's not really a truck, though. It's, it's like a yeah, it's full kind of back-ended truck. I mean, it's a it's a V8 Magnum that's in that thing, so that it's still like pretty hefty. Condom. Does that sound like a condom to anyone else? No. V8 Magnum? A V8 Magnum. Magnum, yeah. No. Yeah. Oh, Mike's the only one that thinks so? That means I'm really sinking down. Well, I, I, get, I get why that nope. is there, but I the same thing. To me, it sounds like a car engine. I'm mm. sorry. So does that mean the Magnum, Trojan Magnum condom sound like a car engine to you? No. No. Oh. Sounds like a condom. <laughs> Trojan. Trojan man! <laughs> Yay. <laughs> oh, that was fun. Uh, the only reason we didn't end up, ended up not going with the Durango is because my brother-in-law got up underneath it and noticed that, there, that the undercarriage had been painted for some reason or another, which could mean several things. Either they wanted it just to look pretty or they were trying to cover something up with it. Mm, so, more likely the second one. Probably. Who cares what the undercarriage looks like? Yeah. So... um. We ended up just opting out of that out to err on the side of caution. It was a good drive. I liked it. It's it was nice to have something big and super roomy on the inside. Yeah. But yeah. 
didn't end up going that route. Tried a Ford Focus. They had zero balls. Like, acceleration was not an option for that car. <laughs> <laughs> and then a Kia Spectra, which was just kind of meh. <laughs> this car actually was the dark horse of the bunch because we weren't planning on actually test driving it. We just happened to notice it was on the lot. and Like, well, that car kind of looks like what we're looking for. Let's go try it. And then turned on the air conditioning and was... Hallelujah. <laughs> Keep in mind, people who don't live in Boise, that it is a hundred and Two. something all week. Yeah. Way too fucking hot all Orb week. Orb sweatingly hot. hot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we had a new show to do, too, right? Yep. That was new. That was new. That was an update. This is, personal this is why That was an update as to, as to why we didn't record last week, and it's mostly just because that's the little car was a piece of shit. It had been around for 15 years. It had kind of run its life cycle. Yeah. Well, it it was older than 15 years physically, too. I mean, yeah. it's a 96. So, what, 20? No. 18. 18 years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Been around a while. Um, you have a, a decent-sized commute, too. Uh, like 10 minutes. Yeah, but distance-wise. That That's all freeway. Yeah. Well, not anymore with the fucking construction they got going on over there right now. <laughs> That'll take Federal Way half the time. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. Well, uh, shall we uh, get the, let's get this ball rolling. Uh, Rochambeau it for the articles. Sure. Here we go. Guy my book. How's this work? Yeah. They beat me and I beat you, but you beat them. So I guess Mike and I tie? No. Oh, but Mike beat, Mason beats both okay, of us. Okay, let's just tally points. Well, then Mason wins, because he covers two of us. Okay, Mason wins. Okay, Nikki goes <laughs> first, because she always panics. Why? Why? Why do you hate me? <laughs> 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 I gotta get you used to it for when, you know, when we're in <laughs> uh, plus, plus, it's good to start the news off with something adorable. E- adorably deadly? So... We've moved from Nikki's tinfoil hat corner to Nikki's Daw Critters corner. <laughs> Daw Critters. Uh, so, my other new favorite animal. <laughs> other new? <laughs> yes, because the, my little, the little, the little elephant shrew last week was my new favorite animal, but now this one, which is deadly. I am not going to try and pronounce the uh, scientific name. Um, so, it's these new tufted ground squirrels that live in Borneo. They are super, super hard to find. They actually had to set up those uh, hunting camera traps to get pictures of them. And their tails are so fluffy. So you say, how fluffy are they? How, how fluffy, fluffy are, are they, they? Nikki? They're so fluffy that they're 130% of the mass of the rest of its body. Just, just take a minute to picture that. A squirrel whose tail is roughly one and a third times as fluffy as the rest of its body. Mm-hmm. Big tail. Lots of fluffy tail. Um, so it has the largest tail to body ratio of any known mammal, which is kind of cool. Uh, so super cute little squizzles running around. Oh, look how fluffy I am jumping in the trees and shit. Oh, oh, do they eat nuts? No, they jump down from the trees, land on deer, rip out their jugulars, let them beat out, bleed out, and then eat their hearts. Kalima! Kalima! <laughs> <laughs> so they are carnivorous, carnivorous ground squirrels, you guys. Well, technically, I think they do eat nuts, too, because they Probably. eat the contents of the deer's stomach. That's true, that's <laughs> true. And they also uh, kill chickens and eat their livers and their hearts. <laughs> this so, squirrel's fucked up, man. This squirrel's fucking badass, man. <laughs> Can you imagine like, just walking through the woods one day, and then all of a sudden it just fucking leaps on you and... Can you imagine training I'm one dying of these adorably. as a guard animal? <laughs> hmm? Can you imagine training one of these up as a guard squirrel? No, robbers, I cannot. Robbers come up to your house. They're like, oh, look at the cute little squirrel sitting on the doorstep. Let's <laughs> kick it out of the way and break into this house and murder these people. Oh, no, you got murdered by a squirrel. <laughs> Fluffy kill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fluffy McMurder squirrel. <laughs> um... So they they say that while these seem unlikely, uh, there was another story about from Borneo about deer that hid underwater for long periods of time that turned out to be true. So sometimes if they were hiding from the fucking squirrel. 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I read this totally right. Uh, <laughs> oh my god. They evolved to they have little deer snorkels like like reeds <laughs> sticking out as they try to sneak fucking, past all these fucking, fucking antlers develop gills. <laughs> <laughs> Take off the antlers and breathe mm. through them. Um, uh, oh god! Next deer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're super cute and super deadly. And like in one of the pictures, one of them's jumping down, and it's like, oh, fluffy tail, oh, scary red demon eyes. And then the other one, it's just staring at the camera. Like in the first picture in this article, is just fucking staring down the camera, like. Do you have any internal organs that are tasty? <laughs> it's looking deep into my soul. It does, and the little fucking the ears on it look like devil horns. Mm, they're super like fluffy, tufted ears. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, they think that the tail is actually evolved to make it look bigger to predators. Mm. Although I would think the fact that it, you know, slices open your jugular with its teeth and then eats your internal organs would be a good enough deterrent. Not for another predator. Yeah. A, a larger predator's like, whatever, kid. Yeah, but he can also reach that larger predator's belly pretty easily, and squirrels are fucking fast. How big is the so squirrel? So like Just standard squirrel size? I mean, because the, um, the squirrels in North Boise are fucking gigantic. I mean, they're like small house cats. <laughs> see, that's normal squirrel size to me. Um, I don't think it actually says in here how big they are. Interesting. Hmm. Oh, but it has a description here on how they murder things. The squirrel waits on a low branch for a deer to pass below, jumps on its back, and bites the jugular vein, whereon the deer bleeds to death. Once dead, the squirrel proceeds to disembowel the deer and eat the stomach contents, the heart, and the liver. Bornean hunters sometimes find these disemboweled deer in the forest, none of the flesh eaten, which to them is a clear sign of a squirrel kill. This is like a, this is like a Borneo chupacabra, man. Just the just 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 disemboweled deer being a sign of a squirrel kill. Like, <laughs> Let that sink in for a second. Yeah, just just, just soak it up. <laughs> and now imagine that this vicious thing has the fluffiest tail ever. It's crazy. It's fucking nuts. Like you Oh, it does say underneath the the title of the article it says it usually eats fruits and seeds, but it has been said to have a taste for blood. Okay, so it's an omnivore. Um that just likes to murder. It's funny if it just killed for fun. You mean like house cats do? <laughs> oh, oh, God, true. have you seen that oatmeal comic that's like, how, like, measures out how much house cats like to kill? I think it's the oatmeal. I have to write this down. So Didn't, the, what, we watched the show at Dragon's House that was on, like, Discovery. It, it was old house. Yeah. It was like the top ten most predatory cats in the world. Or number one was the house cat. Mm. Yeah. Is. The house cats eat, house cats, well, not eat, but stalk and kill more species of a- animals than any other species, ex- with the possible exception of humans. Okay, so here it's, we'll link this in the show notes. It's by the oatmeal, who, as I hope you all know, is amazing. Which, did you guys see his Tesla museum got funded? No. no. Yeah. Um, and it got... Funded by what's his It got place? funded, and the Elon guy Monk. who runs Tesla Tesla Motors donated, what was it, a million dollars? A million dollars, yeah. To it, personally. And he said that they're putting in a, a Tesla power station for their electric cars in the parking lot. I almost Great. made that my news, yeah. but it's been around for a couple weeks now, so I didn't want to... I'm trying to find this... Get something old. I wish this would pull up. Here we go. Uh, da-da, da-da, da-da. So, one in three cats kills prey. I wish the rest of this would load. Basically, they analyzed how much your cat kills that you see. They decided that what you see accounts for less than a quarter of the actual body, uh, body count. In the U.S., there's an estimated 84 million cats, which means, according to the statistics above, 28 million of them are murder cats, which leads the total body count from domesticated house cats every year in the U.S. to 2,912,000,000. Yeah. Yeah. So, kitties like to murder. <laughs> Can you imagine? Which is why you have Fluffy McMurder Kitty. Exactly. And three actual cats. Can you imagine how many fucking mice and nasty ass shit would be running around if there weren't cats everywhere? Yes. Gross. Cats are highly useful. They are. And fluffy. And they purr and shit. Especially when they protect your children from dogs. Mm-hmm. Oh, that one's badass, <laughs> too. Are we going to link that? I think we tried to link that once before, and I forgot. 
Mm-hmm. We just re relink it this time around. Cat saves kid from dog attack. Yeah, that's just... way old news, but it's fun to watch. Well, it's not really fun because the kid gets his leg fucked up pretty good. But yeah, but watching the cat bitch slap the dog and then chase it off and then mm-hmm. come back and check on the kid and be like, "Dude, you okay? Okay, I'll be right back." And chase the dog again. <laughs> like, just hang on, bro. I'll be back. I'll this fuck a, this dog up. This is a bad. <laughs> People say cats aren't loyal. Like I call bullshit. Granted, you die and you turn into food. I heard yeah. a lot of stories about people being eaten by their cats after they die, but, you know, I think yeah. dogs would do that, too. They it, do. Take isn't that supposed to be how Catwoman that. happened? Hmm? No, she was given the breath of life by a cat. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds so lame when you say it like that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just picturing this like, cat oh. going, Don't die on me! Meow! Chest compressions. <sighs> okay, that would be first aid, but well, the, the breath of life. Key first aid. They call that the breath of life sometimes too. Oh, okay. CPR. It's more of the Egyptian yeah. meaning. Mm-hmm. Mystical shit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Egyptian stuff is okay. All right, so we moving on. Sure. Right, is we moving on from the murderous, fluffy-tailed squirrel. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I want one so bad. Uh, are we just moving around the table this way like normal? Yeah. Excellent. Okay. So, my news is... Title is... This comes from uh, The Daily Caller. Uh, this one had been going around uh, the old Facebooks earlier today. And it is... Sort of a therapy thing. The title of it is Kids Teach Robots to Play Angry Birds. And it's a pretty cool idea. So, uh, basically, for a kid who has, uh, who's going through rehab, uh, like whether or not they were injured or need to, need to like basically refine their motor skills, um, I mean, a kid's attention span is, attention span is only so much. Yeah. Even when you're injured. Probably especially when you're injured. Uh, so what they do, they, I guess you can actually use uh, tablets to help uh, with their fine motor skills. Um, uh, so what they do is they've got this little robot. It's adorable. It actually looks like something you would probably buy at, like, uh, Toys R Us, but it's far more sophisticated. Um, uh, what it does is it actually watches you play Angry Birds, and you can actually explain to the robot how to play said game. The program is is or sorry, the robot is programmed to basically understand how touchscreens on tablets work, like it knows how to work a tablet. So it's just you or your job to show it how to play particular apps. Uh, in this case, Angry Birds. So then, once you show the robot, it watches your movements on the screen, and it kind of what it does is it tries to learn what was important about what happened in that scenario. And so you can teach the robot and you can pull back the bird, the bird launches, and then it kind of watches what happens and tries to figure out what's important. So then the robot takes a shot at it. It reaches out its little, it's got little rubber hands, you know, and yeah. it reaches out, pulls the screen back and whew, launches the bird. And then it tries to figure it out and it'll, it'll kind of give like a, you know, robotically emotional response to what happened, whether or not it missed and it'll kind of go, oh. and then if it does, if it does good, it'll, it'll kind of like lift its arms up, and then if you like, you know, congratulate it, it'll actually kind of make this like muscle pose, <laughs> like yeah, <laughs> exactly. And uh, it's a pretty adorable little robot. Like I hope that this is something that they can mass produce. Like there, there's a whole lot of stuff that can go on with it. Um, and the idea is, and I, I read it here. This is it's from Georgia Tech. They're the ones who developed it. Um, Let's see. I'll kind of read this right here. It says, The robot is able to learn by watching because it knows how interaction with the tablet app is supposed to work. It recognizes that a person touched here and ended here, then deciphers that information, deciphers the information that is important and relevant to its progress. According to Georgia Tech, robots can be used to help children who are recovering from illness or injuries and can't use fine motor skills. Pre-programmed robots assisting with a child's daily tasks and needs can be a huge asset for parents, especially since robots are tireless. Rehabilitating muscle movement can be as simple as teaching a robot how to play Angry Birds, Howard said. Uh, Imagine that a child's rehab requires 100 arm movements to improve precise hand coordination movements, Howard said. 
He or she must touch and swipe the tablet repeatedly, something that can be boring and monotonous after a while, but if a robotic friend needs help with the game, the child is more likely to take the time to teach it, even if it requires repeating the same instructions over and over again. A person's desire to help their friend can turn a five-minute bland exercise into a 30-minute session they enjoy. So, it's kind of a cool little thing that they're, that they did, and it's kind of a, a it's kind of a therapy thing for now, but uh, there's also a little YouTube video built into uh, built into the thing where somebody's showing it how to play with a tablet. There's actually two videos. Once you watch the tablet, then it brings up like other YouTube videos. There's one in the upper left hand corner uh, with a little Asian with an Asian lady in it. That one's pretty fun to watch too because that's you can actually see the robot make a few more emotions in that one than than the other video. Um, but I dig it. That's pretty damn awesome. Yeah. And I was, I was, before the show, I was actually telling Mason it's kind of like a modern day Bob. Like if you, if you were, if you were one of the, I don't know whether you call it lucky or unlucky ones to actually own a Bob for your Nintendo. Um, I would go with <laughs> unlucky. Bob I don't even know what you're talking about. Uh, Nintendo developed this robot called Bob. And I think there was like two games, okay. there was, was two games that it would work with. One of them being Gyromite. It's the only one I remember. I, I thought there was two. There Maybe possibly, there is only one. There possibly could have been. Or I think there was always a... They wanted other developers to make Bob games, and no one did, because they were like, well, not enough people own this thing. So, the way Gyromite worked is that basically he had... Bob had spinning tops, and there was two pedestals on either side of him, and uh, they were programmed for the A and B button. So, the game would play and it would kind of determine what you needed to do next based on where you went in in this game called Gyromite. You had to control the D-pad on player one, you plug Bob into player two and it controls A and B and so it would lay tops down on the pedestals trying to get the tubes to go up and down so you could proceed to the next part of the level. Yep. Are you but, saying, talking about Rob? Rob. Rob. It is Rob the robot. I was trying to Google it so I could picture what you were talking about. And it wasn't coming up, and then I was like, oh, it says it's Rob. That makes more sense, Rob the Robot. Bob was a Microsoft interface. There's also a Nintendo <laughs> game called Bob. There's Bob, there's the Blob, the kid boy in his no, Blob. No, Bob popped up, and it's an it's a robot with a gun. Oh. It's called B-O-B. I don't know that one. Yeah, I'd never seen it. But now I see what you're talking about. And it's, I think I remember seeing one of these before. Yeah, and it was a giant pain in the ass because he never moved quick enough. Yeah. Or sometimes the tops would just completely fall out of his grip. His grip. Yeah. And just you're just fucked either way. But uh, these robots are far more fun looking, and and uh, they got far more interactive. Yeah, far more interactive. They they, they learn, which is cool. Uh. Anyway, that's my news. Yes. Very cool. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> no, I just, I, I, no, I just, I think, I think the, that the, the use of the robots and the therapy and everything is really cool. Plus, just the advancements in, you know, computer and robotics technology is always like. And awesome. getting kids excited about. Yeah. Robots. Yes, because, yeah, well, we need people to go into the sciences and you know do things like work at NASA and stuff. And, well, we need to keep having. Nerds who are interested in sci-fi working at NASA, so we get you know cool-looking warp drive ships. Mm-hmm. Oh, interesting. There, this last it says, although it looks like the robot is playing along with the child, the robot can also give cues and make requests. The therapist could tell the robot and could could tell the robot to ask the child to play various games and watch improvements. Then the robot can go home with the child and maintain the training outside of the office. So that's cool. Yeah. Hmm. Going forward, the university plans to teach the robots to play more games on a tablet and recruit children suffering from autism or motor impairments as their teachers. That could be a really good way to get autistic kids to start interacting with other people. That's really cool. And the one comment on this article. <laughs> How's about teaching the robots save America and aiming them like drones? <laughs> Barfus Ob- Obozo? Now that would be constructive, she says. <sighs> America. Murder robots. We already have those. They're called mm-hmm. drones. Yeah. And now Amazon wants to use them to deliver you your porn to your doorstep. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, I kind of want to like find out if Boise is going to be a test so- 
test place for the drones. Oh, God, I, I and would I totally. would specifically order things from Amazon just to have a drone drop it off. Oh, I would too. And I would request that they drop it off on my patio so I don't have to walk down three flights of stairs to pick it up. That oh. would be sweet. I would just wait on my porch patiently and just be like... Impatiently, you yeah. mean. You'd be twiddling your thumbs and giggling uncontrollably. Every time you heard a helicopter go by, you'd be like, what? Oh. And I'd be like, thanks, drone! Yeah. Uh, if they give them permissions, it sounds like they're going to start their testing in uh, Seattle. Yeah. 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 It's because Amazon's based in Seattle. Yeah. So I won't be surprised if Seattle gets it first. But we might get it. Yeah. They need to bring Google Fiber here. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's in Kansas City, and it does well. And then I think they're testing it in Portland next, I think. No, it went somewhere else in the Midwest, I think. Plus, why Portland? Portland, I'm surprised. See, it's Portland. I'm surprised the people who there aren't on, like, 56K dial-up modems, because they're all freaking hipsters. <laughs> Portland's kind oh, of did you see there was an article about hipsters putting flower crowns in their beards now? It's a, it's a thing. Legitimately a thing. No. Like, they weave it's flowers into thing. their They beers. want it to be a thing. Yeah. It's not a thing. It's not a thing. It's a thing that they do as hipsters. It's a thing that requires a baseball bat. <laughs> Wielded by us, I hope. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, see, this, these reasons like hipsters and flower beards are reasons Portland doesn't deserve anything nice. I- mm-hmm. But what about a guy in a... I have a lot of friends in a, in a kilt on a unicycle, uh, wearing a Darth Vader helmet and playing a bagpipe. That means Portland deserves nice things. However, there was a guy on Scotland wearing a kilt, playing Scotland flaming nice bagpipes, things. playing ACDC ACDC's Thunder Thunderstruck. And that was pretty badass. But that was metal. That wasn't hipster. <laughs> right. Can I rant Hip- about something? As hipsters don't deserve anything nice ever. It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Plus, all Portland... Portland is just a sh- is a pale shadow of Seattle, and they know it. That's why they are so angry at everything else in the Northwest, because they are not they are not they are they are not truly hip enough, or inherently cool enough to be San Francisco. Yet they also can't be edgy enough in a, in any music scene, or have developed coffee well enough, um, <laughs> or have enough technological savvy to be Seattle. So they're just angry. They're they are the angry redhead stepchild of the West Coast. You don't think Mason has strong feelings about this, do you? No, not at all. I, you my just, brother you just pretty a, much called the entire city of Portland out. My I have a lot of friends from Portland, and I actually like Portland. And Sarah like Spank Portland lives too. in Portland, and that's where Lake Studios is. But uh, my brother works in a popcorn, a gourmet popcorn store called Poplandia in Portland. Yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ! He brought me back a shirt. It's bright orange. It's pretty awesome. See, I I, I tried to I tried to watch the spoof of Portland, Portlandia, and the fact that the spoofs were terrible and dry is oh, like an expression show. of how bad Portland is. I like Portlandia. I think it's fucking hilarious. Uh, to me, it was just dry. The feminist bookstore cracks me the fuck up. Maybe that you're just bitter. Just... Maybe you're just jaded to the world. I prefer to be jaded. jaded. I prefer to be jaded and hateful. <laughs> it works better. And Aerosmith songs? No. That's actually a really bad Aerosmith song. It was a bad Aerosmith. <laughs> that was like the one Aerosmith yeah. popular song that I did not enjoy. Mm-hmm. I like Pink. That's a catchy tune. No, I don't like that one either. I, I like had the older stuff. Living on the Edge will always be my mm-hmm. favorite song, though. Yeah. I like, um, um, it's called right now. Damn it. Bald sex. Titty fuck. I don't know. Dude looks like a lady? No. Love, love in an, an elevator. elevator? Every time that I look in the mirror. <laughs> oh. Getting clearer. We're all running a song Past for our head now. Gone. Yeah. Dream on. Yeah. That is dream Jesus. on. Didn't I say dream on? No. No. Oh. Lol. I thought I did. So, more news. Welcome oh, to karaoke yeah, yeah, night. And, uh, Nerd it's always podcast. karaoke night when I'm here. <laughs> what are you talking about? Hi, right, Mike. All right. Have so, at you. Uh, yeah, cybernetics, bitches. Yay. Yay. So, uh, 
There's this guy. Uh, his name is Ian uh, Burkhart. They uh, sure it's put a chip Ian. in his head. I'm pretty sure it's Ian. <laughs> it's probably Ian. Ian? Yeah. Ian. Ian. Ian, yeah. Ian. You know, look, I can pronounce stuff. But uh, Ian basically has a chip in his head. And they got a little metal silo that pops out of his skull that they plug in a cable to. And Mason's getting really excited. <laughs> <laughs> they have the uh, he's paralyzed yeah. from the neck down, and they take a sleeve that they put on his arm, connect it up to the computer that his head's plugged into, and he basically focuses his thoughts to activate the chip to make his arm move. Yay! Yep. <laughs> um, <laughs> If, yeah, if you guys go to the article, it's linked. It's actually a pretty cool story the way they read, wrote it. So um, I want to see what the thing that pops out of his head looks like. It looks, like a, mi- <laughs> looks like a microscope camera almost. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it gives this clip to the top of his head there, but yeah. But uh, it looks like mm-hmm. it looks like a very simple version of the shit that gets plugged into the back of your head in the Matrix. Nice. It does. But it's a very, very small chip. And they got it, you know, set up in a very specific center of his brain that's going to... Yeah. So when he concentrate, you know, he does a lot of exercises for the way he has to concentrate in order to get it to uh, make his hand either contract or relax. And it's basically what all he can do at this point is he can make the hand open up or he can make it close. And, yeah, I just... Uh, He's not able to, like, lift a spoon, but he can, like, grab onto a spoon, which is really cool. Yeah. Um, do, 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 do. There was more to that, but I don't remember now, so, yeah. As long as I can, repl- <laughs> as long as in, like, 30 years I can place my entire body with cybernetic parts, I'll be happy. Mm. Yeah, they were talking about, um, the idea is that eventually they could set it up to be where you got the chip in your brain, they got a wire that goes down from your brain down to whatever limb or whatever. Yeah. And then it has permanent electrodes into those spots. So you permanently have a setup that can make a uh, limb that has not been able to function, function again. Yes. And, yeah, in theory, you could do that with artificial, um, yeah, artificial limbs. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Pretty Deus cool Ex is upon us. Yeah, see, mm-hmm. who who needs the meat when you have the metal? Lol. I love me some metal. Um, right. Anyway, it's a cool story. Go read it, because it, I can't even begin to do it justice. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at it now. It's yeah, the chip cool. is just, mm-hmm. it, based on the little diagram here, it's yeah. just slightly bigger than a penny. No, 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 no. It's, oh, wait. You're, no, it's you're looking smaller. at the increase. The yeah, blue box is how big it is. They just blew it up so you can see the texture. Oh, oh yeah, that is super tiny. Yeah, yeah. So on on, on the on the vein of um, implanted chips doing awesome things, side news: hmm. they um, there is a company that has developed and is continuing to refine. Um, the first ones they're doing it for is for birth control, but basically implanted. Um. Wi-Fi or wirelessly, not Wi-Fi, but wirelessly controllable uh, chips that allow, like, medicine dosages and stuff. And the first one they're working on it is for birth control. And it's about the size of a nickel, if I remember correctly. And it can last for 16 years. Yeah. And if you, like, if a woman wants to get pregnant, she can just take a remote control and go click and turn it off, get pregnant, have a baby, and then go click and turn it back on. That's pretty badass. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Does it work the same way as traditional birth control where it affects your hormones? Like, yeah. do you know that? Oh, okay. Yeah, it's, it's, it's totally a hormonal therapy. It's actually a... <clears throat> um, I wonder if that works for hormonal conditions that can be controlled with that. It's very possible, yeah. yeah. Hmm. So... You should post mm-hmm. that link. And it lasts for 16 years and on the way they have it now. And, yeah, is... Um, actually, the chip is powered by, um, the, uh, the electromag- electro, uh, 
like uh, biological makeup of the human of how the human nerves work and stuff. Oh, cool! So, hmm. yeah, That's very neat. cool. Yeah, like uh, so people with thyroid, it, you know, issues that have to take mm-hmm. pills all the time. But, uh, I I yeah. I take birth control, which, as you guys know, is not so I don't get knocked up. Right. Um, mm-hmm. it's for hormonal condition, and that yeah. would be really cool. Mm-hmm. You don't have to worry about doing anything God, for 16 years. God, I hate years. taking medicine. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on so many pills right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, the, one they're, the one that they developed it with, has, it's a specific hormone because it's it's like as an insanely low dosage of this hormone mm-hmm. is will prevent pregnancy. Yeah. So, because they were looking solely at pregnancy prevention with this one at first. Interesting. But still, just... The idea of being able to plug in a how, small chip. I wonder how big that thing is if it's able to dispense this medication. It's like the size of a nickel. How does it have that much medication in it? Like the, the, This hormone works in micrograms. Oh. Mm. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. But you think of it. Uh, the thing even is, if you have to have that replaced out once a year to have a new oh, dosage. Oh, it'd be worth it. You wouldn't yeah. have to. No. Thing, yeah. I mean, and honestly, the cost would probably, if you didn't have insurance, for example, it probably. Yeah. Well, I guess you wouldn't want to get something like that if you didn't have insurance. Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, it just goes underneath the skin. It yeah. doesn't even, you don't even have to penetrate the muscle with it. Oh, wow. It just has to go between the skin and the muscle. Crazy. Mm-hmm. So. That's nuts. You should, um, you should send Yeah, I'll try to like, look, I'll look it, I'll try yeah. to look it up again. Because that's crazy. I love advances like that. Yeah. That's so cool. But we're getting so close to being cyborgs, guys. It's going to be awesome. When we just had all the metal bodies and not have to worry about dying. Because brains can actually li- live indefinitely. But then I could finally get some fucking sleep. <laughs> Death is for the weak? Yes. <laughs> can caffeine stave off death? No. Mm. can accelerate death, actually. Mm. Well, that's unfortunate. But it's a fun ride. Yeah, I'd rather be awake for it. <laughs> Did you guys see that um, the smell of farts can um, reduce your risk of getting cancer? Doesn't matter. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, and wear your sunscreen, people. God damn it. Oh fuck, we were talking about that on the way here. Yeah. yeah. It was like I was uh, a couple of days ago. I was um, uh, down at the down at the uh, Starbucks near my house, and this lady walked. This lady and her daughter walked in, and uh, you know, the daughter was mid teens, and the lady was like. Leather, mm. like she's mm. she you know she's been, been she's been tanning you know she was late thirties early forties and she'd been tanning her whole life, you know you could tell and her skin just looked like leather and her daughter, you know who like I said was in her mid teens you know was just this you know like idealized from the nineteen eighties or and seventies golden tan mm. you know and they're they're you know this is Idaho they were wasps. So, um, you're looking at her. You're like, "That's future you." Yeah, and I'm looking at her, going, you're "Have you look not like looked like? It? Have you not looked at your mom recently?" It was the, was like the thought in my head. I was like, "There's no excuse for that." Like when my mom was young, her parents had a pool, and she used to slather herself in baby oil and go lay out by the pool yeah. until she blistered, because that's the only way she could get a tan. That's also before we knew that was bad for you. Yeah, doing that shit now. Is just stupid. Like, you know, I'm, like, all for swimming pools. Like, I, I'm not a swimmer, like... There's I, a I difference between swimming and tanning. Well, no, but, like... Tanning is typically done in a booth. Yeah. Whereas if you get a tan because you're outside and active, that's a totally different thing. Right, but, like, I was saying, like, you know, for swimming pools and stuff, I'm all for, like, using a swimming pool. So, like, I'm not a swimmer. Like, you're not going to catch me doing laps. Yeah. But I like, you know, going out diving into a swimming pool and just splashing around and having fun with, you know, my friends or whatever. And also on a hot day, it's really refreshing to go out and jump in a big pool of water that cools you off. I hate Idaho. It's so hot here. <laughs> um, but I don't even like swimming. I have no relief. But like, <laughs> but like when I go to get in a pool or something like that, I'm like, I need SPF 500. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and like I, I admit, I'm pale and I burn. I don't have a tan state. I have red and pale. That's it. There is no My brown. natural untanned skin tone has been referred to as glow in the dark. 
Yeah, I'm in the same yeah. boat. Yeah. I got such a bad sunburn on top of my head when I was in elementary school that I actually had a bald spot for part of the school year. Wow. And I had to wear hats to school. And when you already get picked on by the other kids, that's not super fun. But yeah, so I... I evil day star. But, you know, yeah. I... Like I, People I do it like, on purpose. coat myself in the most powerful sunscreen I can find mm-hmm. before I go swimming. I have two bottles of sunscreen. One I leave at home to put on before I go places, and one that I take with me to because, refresh. Damn it! I will reapply the fuck out of that because it sweats off. Yeah. Not good. Uh, skin cancer is bad, you guys. Yes. Yes. No skin cancer. Skin mm-hmm. cancer. Skin cancer for the week. Mm-hmm. Well, my grandpa's got skin cancer on top of his head. Oh, no, I feel like a dick. Thanks. Well, it's, they cut it out. He's been bald since he was 20. It, he didn't really. He didn't have a chance. Yeah. Oh. Grandpa was the same way, though. But he didn't get cancer. He, he died of cancer, but it was like like liver or like or That's pancreatic. Like my, I think it was pancreatic. My cancer. dad's mom had that. She was 98 when she passed. I think if she hadn't gotten that, she would have lived forever. Like, they would have been doing research on her cells. Like, how are you, what, what are you, wait, we need to eat more butter and salt and bacon? Okay, write this down. Somebody write this down. (laughs) Oh, you actually managed to preserve yourself. (laughs) No, she was super healthy and did, like, water aerobics and shit up until she got cancer. Like, she still did all that stuff. Like, not a fragile 98. Yeah. Like, at all. Um, And she ate bacon and eggs every day for breakfast. Salted everything, buttered everything. Yeah. Mm. At least it all tasted good. But fuck yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So Mason, you have news too. Yes, I do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Your news wasn't the yeah. tangent. No. Oh, you sure? Yes. Huh. Um, so, everybody, um, as I have mentioned at least a couple of times before, it has been known for quite a while that. As I, I like how this article puts it. Um, humans and Neanderthals occasionally got frisky. Uh, um, it is also called the Clan of the Cave Bear scenario. Um, Let's get it on. <laughs> so, but anyway, it's been known for a while that um, humans outside of Africa have, you know, basically Europeans and Asians have Neanderthal DNA in them because of well, we got to sexy times on with the Neanderthals on our way to, into Europe and in Europe and on the way to Asia. Had to keep warm somehow during the yeah. Ice Age. What, what? And it was a long, cold Ice Age, tell you. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah. So it turns out that um, it is true that around 2 to 3% of any Eurasian's DNA is indeed Neanderthal DNA. However, that... Our pure human DNA is actually less than uh, what was previously thought. We actually probably have around up to 7% non-homo sapien sapien DNA if you are Eurasian. Um, turns out we didn't just get it on with the Neanderthals. <laughs> uh, we also got it on with the, Denis- uh, the Denisovans and a mystery relative who we haven't figured out which one it is yet. We may not have discovered the actual species yet. We're the fucking prehistoric village bicycle, you guys. Everybody gets a ride. That's right. <laughs> so it's, That's a vagina. I'm going for it. <laughs> uh, it's not totally covered in fur. All right, I think we're good. There's two legs there. All right. Yeah, pretty much. Um, well, it, it's, the, it's the idea that part of it is is that what we, what we consider homo sapien sapien, modern humans... Um, didn't necessarily see any difference between themselves and Homo sapiens neanderthalensis and what is now uh, Homo sapiens uh, Denisovan um, and Homo sapiens were not shurikus from this mystery I'm not species. Sure I guess. Um, <laughs> I, that, that, that's my that's my dog Latin for it. I was really hoping that was going to be a thing that was real. No, that was my own dog Latin. <laughs> sorry. I'm really sad now. Um. But um, the thing the thing is is that it, it partially it comes down to what constitutes being a human being is a big part of it, like on the philosophical side of things, because obviously early you know nowadays what constitutes being a human being is being Homo sapien sapien, 
because we don't have any competition to be human. You know what I always found interesting in sci-fi shows is that, uh, um, is, for example, uh, any other alien breed that we come across all look alike. Like, whereas humans, you can clearly tell an Asian from an African American from a white person, that kind of well, thing. So they never, they never determined that there's like maybe several different like variations of the same race. Right. Well, <laughs> but like, um, you know, um, except for Vulcans and, uh, except for Vulcans. Vulcans yeah. And, uh, in Star Trek. Oh shit. What the, the, the other race. There's Romulans. Vulcans, Romulans. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Vulcans and Romulans. But Vulcans also had black Vulcans and Romulans. Had, Romulans yeah, had, and the late, and the, the female Vulcan on Enterprise. I never saw oh, Enterprise. God. I watched like two episodes and I was like, this sucks balls, but I like the intro. And the ship looked cool. The ship looked cool. The intro was the great. Cool, hot Asian Vulcan. Scott Bakula is pretty okay. Yeah, I can't remember anything else. But not in that. <laughs> the end. Yeah. I pretend that didn't But happen. basically, you know, Klingons look well, alike and yeah. so on and so forth. But um, actually, I like how they did it in Mass Effect. Hmm. Um, they, the way they did it in the Mass Effect series was they explained it straight up. That humans, while you, while humans do not consider themselves gen- genetically diverse compared to other species on Earth, humans are incredibly genetically diverse compared to the other to other sentient species. Ah, so That's like all that bone in our ancestors. We yeah, have. so yeah, makes sense. But basically, in Mass Effect, the explanation is is that even though human genetic code is roughly ninety three percent totally identical between humans Mm -hmm. because it doesn't actually take a lot to get the little changes between us. And there's a lot of junk code in our DNA that doesn't do anything. Um, Holy computers. (laughs) Yeah. At least it doesn't cause us to crash. Yay. Um, (laughs) Or maybe it does. Maybe we're supposed to live longer. um, Well, eh, we're supposed to, they, 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 they hypothesize that our upper end life's age is about 124. 229. If everything goes absolutely perfectly. Um, but after that, our bodies are just like, nope, done, thump. Um, <laughs> but, um, that was just the way they explained it in Mass Effect was that, like, I think they were talking, I can't remember, uh, the Turians, uh, um, Garrosh's species, or not Garrosh, Gar- starts with a G. Garrosh is from War- World of War. Anyway, I can't remember his name. But, you know, uh, mm. Uh, the Turians, that species, they only have like 1% difference in their genetic code between any two people total. You know, between any two Turians. So the, they have really refined, their genetic code's really, really, really similar, whereas human code, even though we're, you know, 93% identical across all humans, that 7% makes us genetically diverse compared to the other species, the other sentient species. So, but yeah, so we're the slutty slutty ho hos of the universe. Yep, we're the slutty slutty ho hos of the universe. Um, or they've just that. been around longer to the point where their DNA just starts thinning out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but <Hair. laughs> care. Um, but so yeah, so so it turns out that um, you know, in, back here in real in reality land, um, humans actually have um mated with more homo se- more, more, more other species of the genus Homo um, <laughs> than we more previously homos, thought. Just say more Homos. Just say it. Just say it. What? Just say more Homos. Well, yes, yeah, it's our genus. Yeah, almost. I know, but it's funny. Um, but I also like the guy in the picture in this. He looks like a caveman Dave girl. Yeah, he does. <laughs> um, but. You know, but like on the, you know, on the philosophical side of thing, it, you know, does bring up what it means to be human. And obviously our ancestors did not see enough difference to consider Neanderthals or Denisovans or, um, the We're Not Shurians, um, to be different than human. They considered them to be other humans, basically. Um, you know, Knowing the size of a Denisovan's brain, they may not have been, you know, he, he was your slow cousin, but, you know, you still loved him. But that, that slow cousin still had a vagina. Yeah. <laughs> or a penis, one or the other. Yeah. 
I'm guessing there wasn't a whole lot of female rape going on around there, or female on male. Uh, guessing. I, probably not the time period. I actually, I'm pretty sure that rape was probably a much lower concern back then, because yeah, that's true. We probably did not view women as property back then. Um, unlike you know, most men still do today, unfortunately. Yeah, fuck those guys. Yeah. So, anyway, uh, yeah, but yeah, it's just kind of cool. We, you know, humans. Hi, we're sluts. Always have been. Always will be. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> um, we'll, well get it on with anybody. Well, prostitution is the oldest known profession, right? <laughs> That is true. They do call it that. Yes. <laughs> hey there. Well, I'll see, give I've got to think. Booty if you gave me some of that grain, I, I think it's got to be at least second. <laughs> well, see, somebody had to have something that someone else wanted for prostitution to happen. So someone already had to be doing some other profession, be it hunting, being a hunter gatherer, or pastoralism or agriculture or something before prostitution showed up because they had to have some good trade for the service. But they say it's the oldest profession, though. The people that were doing the food might have just been doing it for their own survival, and then the prostitutes came along. They're like, hey, I don't know how to do that. How about I trade you for sexing? So second oldest profession because they, you imply there's knowledge in hunting and gathering. Yeah, okay. so, so it has to be at least second. Okay. I'm going to throw a mason at somebody next time they say about the oldest profession. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the oldest profession. Uh, no, it's not, actually. <laughs> and here's why. <laughs> mason, explain this to them. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. So, anyway, I just think it's cool that... Um, well, maybe the idea it's the oldest living profession. And there's uh, still farmers. And there's still hunters that do it as a living yeah. It's true, I guess. So pastoralists and whatnot. Okay. Just because we don't have them in America. Uh, we don't really have any free-range pastoralists in America. We do have a specific kind that's, you know, basically kind of unique to America, though. We call them cowboys. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it's... Uh, but yeah, the whole, the whole, the whole idea that, you know, we probably, there were probably other, uh, species of the genus Homo or subspecies of Homo sapien, sapien, or Homo sapien that, um, that we interbred with. I don't know. It's, it's kind of intriguing because, you know, it, it kind of, it just brings up the idea, more of the idea of where did we see our species ending back when there were other humans? other species of humans around did we where was the difference did we ever see a difference you know what did we think that homo you know what we call nowadays homo erectus was different than homo sapien was different from neanderthal or did we just or did our ancestors just still see any of the other human types the other members of the genus homo that they encountered to just be other humans and they didn't really think anything different of it i mean some of them were pretty obvious like the hobbits um, cause they were three feet tall. Um, but, um. Wait, hobbits are a thing? Or are you just being a jerk? No, I'm dead serious. There's, um, a species nicknamed hobbits that. <laughs> I thought you were jerk. joking too. So was I. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, Homo uh, florian- floriensis. Is there are really these hobbits? They're. Not a. Um, not a. Dude, um, the, Homo florensis. Yeah, they're about three feet tall. They lived on an island. Did they have big w. fuzzy feet? Yeah, they had big feet. We don't yes. know if they were fuzzy. Because and they were fuzzy. I'm sure they were, but you know, they're about three feet tall. My feet are fuzzy. Their feet were fuzzy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they lived in Asia, so um, and like Asians have no hair. Yeah. But they're Southeast Asian, technically. We'll pretend they were fuzzy. It's okay. Okay. Um, but yeah, they were they're three feet tall humans with big feet who lived on an island in Indonesia. Homo floriensis. Can you imagine you pull up to a fucking island like, oh, this looks like a pretty sweet... What the fuck is that? Why is it so short? Why does it have a beard and it's three feet tall? Oh, my God. Um, And the thing is, is like... Why does it have a beard on its feet? Yeah. <laughs> um, But they were... There's stories from the, uh, the Indonesian islands about a tribe of short people 
where there's possible that the hobbits did not die out until only about six to eight thousand years ago. Interesting. Uh, so they would have been alive after the advent of writing. When we thought almost all other, when we, at the point where we were normally, we would have considered scientifically all other species of, of Homo dead and gone. So they actually, because of their isolation, lasted what? so much further in. Was this story derived from Gulliver's Travels by chance? <laughs> no. <laughs> Call them the Lilliputians. <laughs> They're already hobbits. Yeah, they called them hobbits because anthropologists are nerds, and most of us have read, have read Lord of the Rings. Yes. <laughs> so, but yeah, they're and they're, they fit the description. Three feet tall human. Mm-hmm. So. That makes me really happy. <laughs> Like really, and they weren't really just happy. they weren't just dwarves. They were like anatomically it, like they were anatomic, just a, yeah. And it was and the thing is, is like dwarfism mm-hmm. is something that happens occasionally too. In the case we're talking about humans, right? This was a species that was three feet tall. And the thing is, is like uh, our fa- our most famous ancestor Lucy. Mm-hmm. She's only about three feet tall. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Um. Our, it is very likely that our last common ancestor with the other great apes, or more specifically with the chimp, and the the chimp and the bonobo, because we the, us the, our last common ancestor with the chimp branched off from gorillas and orangs, probably six million years before we branched off from chimps. Um, but they were about three feet tall, give or take a little bit. Um, they were probably. Uh, they were probably knuckle walkers, like chimps. Um, and then we, what happened was, is that we went to the ground, our ancestors, and the chimps' ancestors stayed in the trees. So and we migrated out on out of the shrinking forests onto the uh, now plains of Africa, whereas the chimps' ancestors stayed in the forests, and that's where the divergence happened. So we stood up. So we could use our hands. We had a better vision. We could run faster. It was more energetically efficient on the planes to be bipedal. Whereas to stay in the trees, it's not necessarily more energy efficient, but it's a lot more mobility efficient to stay, to can use all four limbs for mobility. Just reminds me, I really wanted to do a review of Planet of the Apes. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. I had this book that I got in high school. Well, see, that's one of the things about, about Planet of the Apes. I'd be like, yep, here's a gun, Caesar. Go for it. Oh, my oh, God. Oh, no, no. Your thumb can't hold on to it. What? What? <laughs> Sorry. They, they did. They did okay. While they, riding horses through fire. Right. Their thumbs couldn't hold on to them. Right. Well, there. they did. So. Um, they were super monkeys. It's fine. Not um, monkeys or apes. I know. I say that because it bothers you so much. <laughs> but, yeah, I saw Planet of the Apes on Saturday, and it's fucking amaze balls and go see it because just go see it like i liked the last one i just saw it and was really excited that i saw it right before the next one came out but now i have to wait like two years kind of bummed but i liked the last one but it was a little slow this one totally makes up for it it's just like all guns and monkeys and fire and <laughs> horses jumping through said fire and monkey yeah. in a tank oh and also, just a couple of quick updates. Um, for those of you who don't know, well, this will hopefully be going out before the finals happen, but the finals of the international, uh, the big Dota 2 tournament are coming up. Um, the preliminaries, um, end tomorrow, Monday. So this won't be out in time for that, but the, um, 18th through the 21st is the actual finals. And, um, the total prize pool is uh, over ten million dollars, with the top team getting four point nine million dollars. Who says who says playing video games can't pay? And I also made the point earlier that these guys also probably live off sponsorships. Yeah, which means they're also getting paid a regular paycheck. Yeah, and they get to keep the prize money. See, Ooh. mom, it is possible. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> plus, well, plus a lot of these guys will play in other tournaments throughout the year because mm-hmm. uh, you have to qualify to get to the right, international. Right. Um, and like the other tournaments on in Dota are, you can the way the game works is that you can set up a professional tournament, have people buy the ability to watch the tournament in game, 
and that money goes to a little of it goes to Valve, obviously, for making the game and everything. And then the rest of it goes to, you know, the sponsor so they can make a prize pool. So they win money at other tournaments besides the international. Just wow, to win that pr- that main prize of the international would be nice. Four point nine million dollars this year. Speaking of tournaments, one of my favorite tournaments is going on right now. World Cup? Evo. Oh. World Cup ended. Germany yeah, same won. Ro- yeah, Germany won. My German friends got really, really drunk. They made a lot of noise. Yeah. My sister. Yeah, I noticed uh, Sarah Ober was making a lot of internet noise. Yeah, she's friends with my friend Lisa. They used to live by Angela. Mm-hmm. And they met. I really wish we hadn't introduced them because the two of them together, because Lisa's actually from Germany. Mm. So... She's lived here for 25 years, but she was born in Germany, and she has her dad still there. So, I and went down, and I guess the two of them together were louder than the entire bar, and probably drank as much beer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and so yeah, Evo tournament. Uh, yeah. So they're they that that's uh for those of who don't know, Evo is the uh, the it's a fighting tournament for. Video games. Yeah. So Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, that kind of thing. Yeah. I guess one of the small news is that was revealed there was uh, uh, Raiden as a character for Mortal Kombat 10. Like, they hadn't revealed him yet, so. How would you have a Mortal Kombat without Raiden? I don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, seriously, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> he's been there since the beginning. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so It's like, you know, I think we're going to leave out Scorpion and Sub-Zero and Johnny Cage. Oh, do you know how many people would fucking rage if they well, looked look, out Sub-Zero and Scorpion? Look, we had a Pikachu, you guys. We had a Pikachu. It's fine. <laughs> If you had Pikachu to Mortal Kombat, he'd probably act like that fucking squirrel you reported on. Oh yeah. my god, that Except for he'd also have electricity badass. powers. Yeah. Electrical he'd, powers. <laughs> he'd actually be able to oh, catch him on camera. So he's basically... Bl- so he's Blanca. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, but, yeah. Um, oh, oh, yeah. Did you hear about the whole fiasco from the eSports League? I was going to say also... Uh, uh, um, well, Brain... Oh, t- Tekken, s- Tekken 7 was announced. Yes. Yay! Yeah, I know. I know. I thought Nikki would be happy about that. Yay! It's like we got, like, uh, I would like two to put weeks this out. of the backstory here we're going through. Yeah, I was like, oh, I'd like to put this out there to the fighting game people. Um, hmm. Where's my Soul Calibur 5? Soul Calibur oh, 4 sucks. probably coming. I hated Soul Calibur. Soul oh, Calibur is the best fighting game there is. Tekken. I'm sorry, it's Tekken. It's Soul Calibur. It's not... It's so Soul Calibur. From an arcade employee standpoint, I got sick of Soul Calibur way before I got sick of Tekken. Because, yeah, like, Soul Calibur has weapons and way cooler than because of that. And a very odd Mike announcer. <laughs> yes, and the crap the announcer says. I got annoyed by it. I didn't I didn't like Soul Calibur very much. But Tekken I like Soul Calibur. Yeah, that's I'm fun. A huge I, Soul Calibur. I like them both equally. It's uh, yeah, They're different games. One's weapon-based, one's... You know, a fist fighter. I think yeah. that's why I liked it. Also, the fact that I got so good at it, you know, on my break time that nobody wanted to play me anymore. That was pretty cool. Yeah, you know, that realistically, all I can really say is, I like boobs. They all got boobs. It's, it's oh, well, then good. Dead or Alive is the game for you because <laughs> yeah, that game invented boob mechanics pretty much. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. they bragged at one point about their boob physics. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, um. Uh, Never bragged about my boob physics. <laughs> <laughs> However, Japanese video game developers will. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Thanks, Team Ninja. <laughs> <laughs> I could not say it. I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> uh, All right. Any other small? Oh, the, oh, sorry, the, e- the esports thing. Um, the actually the fighting games got, plays right into it because um, they were not. The, mind you, this was one out of South Korea, and as you know, as much as I love a lot of things that come out of South Korea, Samsung, K-pop, um, LG's in there too, but mostly Samsung. Um, they're still pretty mis- misogynistic in South Korea. We'll just put that out there. Um, still, no offense, still love you guys, and you also have awesome food. I'm just gonna put that out there too. Kim cheese the bomb. Mm-hmm. Um, Okay, are we still making some of that? Oh yeah, we'll, okay, we'll figure it out. Okay. Um, and but the esports league out of South Korea that is a relatively big deal in the esports industry because um, 
yeah, South Korea has been doing the whole StarCraft thing longer than anybody else has thought esports was a good idea. Um, um, they they had it they had it set up so they had their tournaments they had their StarCraft tournaments for boys, um, and then um, they had a couple of other tournaments that were for girls only, and one of them was like I think it was Tekken Tag. But it doesn't matter. It was a fighter, um, and then they had the boy, but but they only but then they, they had like the boy version of the fighter tournament, but then like the StarCraft tournament was boys only, and there was no female equivalent, and women were not allowed to enter the male tournament. Um, and see, the only reason I can think of that this is one, I don't think in esports there needs to be a separation between men and women. No. They're just afraid we're going to kick their asses. That's I, but yeah, that's see, that's the thing is, I think it was that there was a whole bunch of frail, um, there was a whole bunch of uh, frail um, male egos involved that didn't want to see a girl get a prize versus men in the StarCraft tournament. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense to, and to separate they, gender. Yeah, they immediately got a whole crap ton of flack for it, and were and like the next day, they reversed their decision. We're allowing women into the StarCraft tournament. Yeah, basically just because there's no physical difference in playing video games. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's why you have mixed gender poker. Yeah, yeah there's no difference in playing mixed poker. Mixed gender NASCAR. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Granted, I mean, you wouldn't throw women into a male football league because... I don't know. I know some lady football players who could fucking... In junior high, there was two, Saber Gamble and... Uh, 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 but they're incredibly... Cassidy Blaine. They're incredibly rare exceptions to the rule. Yeah. When it comes to... Uh, women who could compete with men in things like football. Um, yeah, you know, it's, it's one of those things where, like, I, I mostly don't like separation of the sexes, but there's certain things where I kind of think it's okay. Like, well, in, I think, I think that if you can try out and hold your own against them, you should be able to play with them. Right. But, um, I think that two things will happen in that case. One, um, like football's barely barely ready to accept that they have gay players. Yeah, but they are. But they Yay. are. Yes. Um, it's not the players that are having problems accepting this. No, it's not. It's the it's fans. The, the fans, the coaches, and the owners. Yeah. 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 All the players are like, whatever. Like, I forgot the ex care. the ex Vikings kicker who he, he had him on Nerdist a couple of times. Uh, mm. uh, he's a he's a huge geek. Like he yeah. plays World of Warcraft on a regular basis in video games and stuff like that, and he stood out for gay rights and yeah. was basically released from the Vikings. And wasn't even gay himself. He was just yeah, saying that gay like, people were cool. He was like, that's, a, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, he, but, like, the fans aren't ready for it, but also, like, I think there would be a bias of trying to hurt the women intentionally to get them out of the league. Mm, kind of like in the military. Mm. Yeah. yeah. That's um, true. And also, men and women are physically built differently. Like, there are advantages and disadvantages to both sexes when it mm-hmm. comes to that. And men, we are naturally just way stronger in our upper bodies. I don't care anybody says, I am not stepping in a ring with Ronda Rousey. Well, also, you're not phys- You haven't trained. <laughs> male or female, you have not trained to wrestle or box or... Anything like that. So you don't have those skills or the muscle. Oh my god, I love She's, watching those female like MMA fighters. That's Ronda Rousey. And oh. she is fucking incredible. Like Oh my god, they're fucking beasts. And they hold grudges. Men are just like, we're punching each other because this is what we do for a living. Women are like, end, you like, made me up? bleed. Fuck you. I murder you in the face. The last it's the last awesome. the last UFC Ronda Rousey it was a couple of weeks ago knocked her opponent out in 16 seconds. Yeah. Second They're shortest time in MMA history. Scary. Fucking clobbered fucking. and fucking this chick's face just oozing blood like from a punch she took and and Ronda Rousey actually like fractured one of her part of her hand yeah. after she fucking landed that punch. <laughs> she hit her that fucking hard. I was like, ah, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The women that get into shit like that I think are way scarier than the guys that do it because Guys seem better at separating the sport from their personal life, whereas women hold fucking grudges. Yeah. Like, yeah. I had friends who did roller derby. Oh, my God. You do not want to piss them off in the ring. Like, <laughs> Yeah, I want to go to a Treasure Valley roller derby. <sighs> it's fun. I haven't been match. in a while, but it's awesome. 
these chicks are tough. Like, I had a roommate who was in it, and I remember she would come home just covered in these gnarly, awful purple bruises. Be like, look what I did today. You know. <laughs> what? Check out this new bruise I got. Exactly. Yeah. I'm like, what is wrong with you? It's a badge of like, honor. Are you insured right now? Like, <laughs> nope. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> well, you're, well, I'll say when she's competing, she's insured. Well, yeah. It, but. but still. Whip It's a great movie, by the way. Oh, God, I love that movie. It's a great movie. It. It's based on a book. Ellen Page and Drew Barrymore are adorable. I have a book on roller derby, actually. Okay. We should probably end this. Yeah. We about... still have things to do. Yes. All right. Well, we're back. We had an extra long news because we had a lot to talk about. Because we hadn't seen each other guys. in a while. Yeah. yeah. So we hope you enjoy our slightly longer news show. Anyway... As always, if you want to get a hold of us, feedbacknerdeffect.com, Facebook page, Twitter, stuff. There, there's something about this Google Plus thing I've heard about. You might make a fart over there and we, we might smell it, but that's about as far as it'll go. And it'll help us not get cancer. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Nikki, just for fun, might put a ravenous squirrel over there. Oh, I should. Oh, my God. I wish you could just animate it to run across the, the screen. People would be like, well, that, what's that, a squirrel? And, and then it charges again. your monitor. Yeah, and then it charges your monitor. <laughs> And it's, it's got blood just dripping, it, like a pulsating deer heart. And like it, it's it kind of like that. It's kind of like a zoomed in version of the that big animated gif of the pug licking your screen. Like it just mm. kind of fucking charges mm. your screen. Just a, just blood squirrel, just diving at your face. Sounds like a sci-fi movie. Oh, sci-fi channel get movie. On yeah, that. <laughs> they're making Sharknado two when this gold is sitting around in Borneo. Like seriously, there's also zombie beavers. What? That's a show. That's a movie. Zombie beavers. Is it out? Maybe. Where can you find it? Mm. I, this, what? <laughs> Sorry. I love shitty B-movies, and that sounds like a really shitty B-movie. Oh, then you need to see zombie strippers, too. You've been saying that. <laughs> Have you guys seen Fido? Oh, God. No. It's like, it takes place in the 50s after a zombie war happened, oh. and the zombies are being kept as pets. And oh. this boy has, well, they're being kept as, like, manservants, uh, and a little boy keeps one as a pet and puts a collar on it. They all wear collars that don't let them bite, um, and he names his Fido and treats it like a dog, and it ends up, like, biting someone, but it loves the little boy so much that it conquers its bloodlust. <laughs> it's got Bill Burr in it. Uh, let's see here. It's just, this is 2014, but it's got rank, so I imagine it's probably out. Uh, zombie, oh, it's just called Zombievers. All one word. <laughs> So Z- Zombievers is an action-packed horror comedy in which a group of college kids staying at a riverside cabin are always uh, as are menaced by a swarm of deadly zombie beavers. A weekend of sex and debauchery soon turns gruesome as the beavers close in on our kids, writing the line between scary, sexy, and funny. The kids are soon fighting for their lives in a desperate attempt to fend off a horde of beavers that attack them and around their cabin. The moral of the story, kids, is no lakeside orgies. <laughs> You must remain at least three miles from the lake. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Especially if there's sexy time happening. Uh, and if you hear noises in the middle of the night, don't get up without a flashlight and go, who's there? Yeah. Yeah. And remember, always travel in pairs. Never travel alone. Mm-hmm. Have weapons. Turn your cell phone on to vibrate. Yeah. Yeah. It had its world premiere on April 19th of 2014 at the Tribeca Film Festival. So, Alrighty then. Mm-hmm. Obviously did not make it to the theaters. <laughs> uh, Gee, you think? Yeah, so it, went, it was a direct, uh, direct thing. And anyway, Netflix will pick it up eventually. I'm sure, if it's not there already. Yeah. <laughs> um, Alright, for the Effect News Show, we have been... Mike and Logan. Mason, Ireland. And I'm Dustin Vancouver, and we'll catch you guys next week. Oh, and Fandemonium, two weeks. Be there, be square. Bye! (laughs) Or you can be there and be square. That's true. I'm not going to judge. No judgment. No judgment. Bye, guys. (laughs) It's hip to be square.